I've always done art since I've been in New York as a means to get by. Sometimes it's working better than others, you know. Well, everybody says I should be getting paid more for them, and God knows it took me such a fucking long time to make this, I should have definitely been getting paid more for it, you know? History tells us that Leadbelly probably had brown shoes. Well, we don't know for sure. I don't know anything more about art than I did when I was just sitting around drawing pictures when I was five years old. I didn't go to any art schools. I wish that I had. Anything that I know, I, I picked up. I usually have at least a, a commission or two in the works. To make a decent living, you'd have to be making like a couple of months, you know? So you've got to get up in the morning and fucking pour the clay out and start making them. In Australia, I was on the dole and had my band. I was in a band called Lubricated Goat. I did everything. I wrote the songs, I produced the record, I played half the instruments on there, and I even did the uh, cover art. I used the doll as kind of an art grant, you know, and uh, I couldn't get by just on the doll, so I supplemented my income by doing art. I would sell sculptures. For some reason, I tended to go towards doing sculptures, which I didn't sell for a lot of money, but they were quirky and they were fun and stuff like that. I used to do a lot of this guy, Bud Dwyer, who uh, shot himself on TV. I used to put springs in them, which was kind of novel. But I would make like Hitler with his arm on a spring. There was a lot of stuff with springs. The spring period lasted for a few years, but that's over now. I thought it might be good to paint this ear around about now. Oh, it's good to get some fucking paint on his face. We got signed to a label in America, you know, so I, we came over and toured, and it was very inspiring, and we felt that we were finally in the right place and in our niche for our music and that. So the second time I toured, I stayed here. I didn't even have the doll here, so it was even more important to uh, do art. I make more money fucking painting the walls at the place I'm playing at. I'd like to be making a living through music, but that's more and more impossible. And so it behooves me to try and make a living out of art. And in New York, of course, the art and music scenes go hand in hand. One of the most inspiring things in uh, the art scene here is how much money people sell such crap for, you know? And it's kind of like, Jesus, what a bunch of fucking crap. How much is that? Well, I've never really found a way to uh, make the most money out of the least amount of work which has also always been a very appealing concept. Usually when I've made a sculpture, I get whoever's buying it to meet me in a, a very public place. So that uh, I pull it out and show it to them and somebody else in the place goes, oh, that's great, can you make me such and such, that happened surprisingly often. It used to happen a lot at the Mars bar. And because they're often sculptures of musicians or whatever, I get a lot of commissions for musicians. When I became friendly with Stu and I learned he was doing these things, we talked one night at, at Milano's, I think it was, and we kind of like bonded over Lead Belly. And I was like, if I ever get a sculpture done, it's got to be Lead Belly, you know? And the funny thing is, is that Stu texted me a couple weeks ago, and he's like, you know, he's like, I just got a whole bunch of stuff done on it yesterday. And I was like, yesterday was his birthday. So like, I think I'm like a 
majority of this work ended up getting done like on Lead Belly's birthday, which is like so cool. We're uh, outside of uh, the building where apparently Lead Belly used to live. So we're taking a picture of Lead Belly in front of the plaque. Which way is the best? Like this. Is right in front of the plaque. Well, uh, I don't make a lot, but yeah. when I tell people the price, I don't want them to be put off by the price. ka -ching. I'm giving you more than you said. Because, really? Yeah, you were like, I needed the money and blah, blah, blah. Oh, you thank you very money. much. Yeah, thank you, I love you. If I knew people that I could say a, a good price and they wouldn't turn up their nose, I would gladly do it. If I was to say, that's going to cost you a thousand dollars, I would, uh, I guess I just don't meet the right people. I've got to go to more highfalutin establishments or something.